and I don't mean this in any way, uh, I like having them the second time. You know, something about the second time means they like the first time. That, that's, that's when it's really a blessing. Amen. We're going to have to get some roadies in here. What, what do you what, what, what do you think, Daryl? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There they go. That, that's good. Don't forget anything, though. That, here comes the roadie back. <laughs> Open your Bibles, if you would, to Luke 24. I'll be there in a minute. Luke 24. You all know this scripture. Uh, I've used it quite often during times of weddings. Uh, I think it's beautiful scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It says, but now abides faith, hope. It should be on there, Mike. There it is. But now abides faith, hope, love. These three. And the greatest of these is love. It, the scripture never says God is hope. It says we have hope in God. The scripture never tells us God is faith. It says have faith in God. But the scripture does tell us that God is love. He is a manifestation of love. That was, that's what separates him from all other false gods in the world. Any, any other God that you ever hear about. They don't have a characteristic like love. There's nothing like love. Love's one of the most uh, powerful forces in the world. If you walk through and you understand these three graces, the greatest, the Scripture says, is love. Last week, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Both churches were packed, not only our church, but churches all around were packed out. Here it is, the Sunday after the Resurrection Sunday. And the churches are not full. And I'm not condemning. I'm not throwing stones. We had people travel to get here from Colorado, Corpus Christi, other places like that. And that was wonderful. Here's the issue. It is so easy to slip back into your old habits of mind and living. As a matter of fact, it's almost natural to slip back. Why do we do it? We drift toward weariness chronic spiritual fatigue, being distant, evasive. Uh, we think coming at times just to a service and we hear about a resurrection that Jesus had resurrected and we have to ask ourselves, why is it? Why is it we do that? Why, why do we get excited about uh, a day and then we drift away from it? And Luke 24 kind of gives it a little bit of an answer when it shares that now that same day, two of them and these were disciples of Jesus, not of the 12. I would say they were of the 70, because there were 70 disciples also at one time. We're going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. So it speaks as if they had left Jerusalem, where great commotion and excitement was going on, resurrection, and now they're seven miles away walking. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Tuesday night, we talked about Mary when she went into the garden. When she went into the uh, tomb, she saw Jesus, and she thought he was a gardener. He can look like anything. He can look like a biker, a cowboy, a gearhead. Uh, you don't even recognize him. It's when his voice, and he uses your name, it changes everything. So here, he's walking along with them. I have to ask myself, and I hope you do too when you're reading your Bible, how did he know where they were? They're seven miles away. Seven miles from Crosby would put me what? In Dayton? Would that be halfway? Okay. Your house. No, that wouldn't be right. I wouldn't say Jesus ever been there. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, 
let's, let's stay, stay with me. Stay with me. Uh, seven miles is, is still a good distance. And they're walking, and he goes and finds them seven miles away. It, it messes with me because there's one scripture that tells that one night the disciples went back fishing. And when you, a person, a man with no future always goes back to his past. Peter went back to his past, and they all went fishing. They followed him. And somewhere on the Sea of Galilee, when they, in the morning, the sun came up 100 yards from them, Jesus was cooking fish. How do you do that? Take a Lake Livingston, Conroe. How do you find somebody in the morning 100 yards from shore? He knows where you're at. He knows what you're talking about. They were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? What y'all talking about? What you talking about? They stood still, their faces downcast. I'm sure they were a little depressed. One of them named Cleophas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? And Jesus said, What things? I just love this. He asked, they said, well, you know about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning. They didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions, our disciple friends, went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. What are they saying? We went to the tomb. Angels were there. Didn't see him. Disciples were there, didn't see him. What was that? That was called the resurrection, you idiots. That's what it was. It was the resurrection. Jesus wasn't there. This is what your hope is all about. Then he said, this one again. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. This is important. And they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And he went in to stay in... Uh, and so, so he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them... He took bread, communion, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Hold on. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him? And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other. I'm sorry. Poof. Okay, they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Listen, when hope seems lost, love walks up. When hope seems lost, love walks up. The disciples were absolutely in the dark. Yes, we've learned it's been a stressful week. The one they had pinned their hopes on, dreams on. Jesus had been falsely arrested, accused, beaten, unbelievably crucified. They rolled the stone, and they thought it was over, and then they heard he had risen. How much more could they take? Discouraged, confused, and they, had, they are heading for him home. Don't, again... It's important to understand. Don't doubt in the dark what God has showed you in the light. I mean, he told them he was going to die. He told them he was going to resurrect, but they doubted in the dark. God has told many of you, you've got a word from him. I remember many years ago, God told me that my family would be safe. It looked like it was impossible. 
impossible. And yet through difficulties in life, I led my dad to the Lord, my mom to the Lord, my sister to the Lord. Now listen, my dad's in heaven, my sister's in heaven. My mom is closer to heaven than earth right now. My brother sent me a message yesterday talking about some outlaw friends that he has going to church. Uh, his life's turned around himself. And if you know anything about my brother, Amen. Things are turning around. I'm telling you, Acts 16, 31, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. You've got to hold on to the word. Amen. You can't doubt in the dark what God showed you in the light. And here they are in a dark moment. Listen, the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. As two of the disciples are heading home, they're interrupted seven miles out. Love walked up. God is love. love. As they talk and discuss these things along with each other, Jesus himself. It doesn't just say Jesus. It said Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Their hearts were slow. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, hopeless, 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 hopeless. And then verse 32 said, were not our hearts burning within us? Their heart, their heart being picked right back up. It started rolling again. I've said this forever. Your genesis will determine your revelation. How you start is how you're going to finish. And what does that mean? The scripture says that he started explaining to them from Genesis, and he went all the way through the scriptures to Malachi. Malachi. Amen. He went all that. Malachi is the Italian prophet. Amen. He worked all the way. Up. So the scripture, he said, how slow of heart to believe. Slow, dull. Yeah, yeah. In other words, your heart starts callousing up. A callous heart is one of the worst hearts that can be. Your heart was once soft. The scripture tells us to plow up the fallow ground. Amen. Soften up your heart again. So beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them him. Have you, if somebody asks you, explain to me yourself. Let me hear about you. I just explained to you a little bit, just a little bit about me and Pastor Rick. Now, I can tell you all kinds of stuff about me and that brother. We've been to Sturgis together. We've been all kinds of places together. I can talk about me and him. I can tell you about me. I can tell you about me all the time. Can you explain yourself to somebody that wants to know about Jesus? So Jesus begins to explain himself. I, I love this. And he begins to talk to them. His manners, we talked about hermeneutics. That's what hermeneutics is. The, the explaining the scripture, helping people understanding, opening it up, the study of biblical interpretation. His manners open their, their mind. Your manners, you know you got manners, some of you? You know manners are a good thing? It's a good thing to open a door for a lady. It's a good thing to be polite. It's a good thing to say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. These are manners. These are things you learn. That if you didn't learn them, you were taught them with a belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was taught this. The scripture says he acted as if he was going further. Jesus often did that. Walking on the water, disciples in the boat screaming, ah, it's a ghost. The scripture says in the book of Mark, he looked like he was going to walk further. He was going to keep right on walking past the disciples. Hey, the book of Matthew tells it. I think I, I forget it's chapter 14, wherever somewhere in there. So he's gonna walk further. Why was he gonna walk further? Why was he gonna pass the disciples in a boat during a storm? I tell you why. Because he's making better time than they were. If I'm I ain't getting in the boat with y'all, y'all going too slow. I'm gonna keep right on walking. And they begged it and, and they said, Lord, it's, it's a ghost. You remember that? And they said, Lord, if it's you, better tell us to come. Who else do you know walks on water? So he tells Peter, get out of the boat. Peter gets out of the boat, walk, you know, sure. So here it is again. He, he's with them, and it says that he acted as if he were going further. That's a manner. But they urged him to stay. After he broke the bread. You ever wonder how Jesus broke bread? You know, I, I know in your mind's eye, it's like, snap like this. Did you know this is not the only time he broke bread? He broke bread in John chapter 13 when he took care of the disciples. But he also broke bread twice, two other times when he took fish and bread and broke the bread. And when he broke the bread, the bread multiplied. When he broke the fish, the head grew a tail and the tail grew a head. Snapped the fish, the head grew a tail and the tail grew a head. Snapped the fish, the head grew 15,000 people were fed. He had a manner about him, how he did things. Certain people eat certain ways. I've ate with Josiah over here several times. Did you know this young man can eat his weight in food? 
and he eats very quickly. Amen. I mean, it's, he don't, he's not about conversation when it's time to eat. He wants to eat. I mean, he's going to eat. I mean, we're not here to talk. We're here to eat. <laughs> certain folk got certain mannerisms about them. I can watch my kids, how they walk, and I can tell you that's my son. And that's my daughter. My daughter was here this week from, uh, my oldest daughter was here this week. It's the other daughter. My oldest daughter was here this week for a funeral. Uh, came in. I can watch Mandy. I can tell you she has mannerisms about her. Most of them are not good. <laughs> I tried to teach her. She, she told me it was legal to cuss a cow. I don't know, Miss Peggy, if it's legal to cuss a cow, but she said it's legal to do that because it's just you and the cow. She worked cows for nine years. I mean, I, I don't know. I just left it alone. It said after he broke the bread, their eyes were open. They knew it was him. Imagine their astonishment. Eyes open. You're Jesus. And before they could get this us out, boom, he disappeared. Hey, and then their hearts start beating faster. Amen. Love had walked in. Hope was renewed. They went from fearful to fiery. Amen. We're not our hearts burning within us while he opened the scriptures to us. There are those who speak to you that get your heart beat up. There are those who talk to you that make your baby jump. Yeah, they do. Amen. Every time it's like you feel their baby jump, like Mary and uh, what's that other woman's name? Elizabeth. Hallelujah. I love a church that knows what I'm talking about. Amen. And Elizabeth, they, the babies jump when they're together. There's certain people I get around, my baby will jump, man. I mean, I, I like that. That's good stuff. And that's how it happened here. You cannot comprehend the Scripture until you follow the Savior. I've met people all the time say, I read my Bible. I read the Bible. I know the Bible. I, yeah, but you don't know him. When you know him, now you can comprehend the Scripture. Now you understand the love letter. Now you know that this, this was written to you. Amen. About you. You're all through the Scripture. Amen. It's important to understand when you catch it. it, it you know, it's like putting together a puzzle without a picture or like trying to pilot a plane without a map. Relationships will open your eyes. After reaching the other disciples, Jesus appeared to all of them and said in Luke 4, 24 verse 44, he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Now he talked to these two. They run back to talk to the other disciples. When they get there, Jesus shows up. And he says, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Your prayer is when you don't understand your Bible, is that God will open your mind so that you will understand the scriptures. I, I, people are so biblically illiterate today. Amen. They know how to play games on computers. They're good with, with other little things they do. But when it comes to the Bible, it's like, I don't understand. Oh, ask God. Open my mind. And then don't, don't start in Leviticus. Just let me help you, okay? Uh, no, that's a hard one. Amen. But you just, just find somewhere easy to start with. And, and then, then ask God to open your mind. Hallelujah. Can you see the lights going on in the room? When Jesus started sharing to them him, and he starts back in the scripture, and he says, listen, guys, do you remember the Pentateuch? Oh, yeah, all of, the, all of us know the Pentateuch. First five books of the Bible. Yeah, we know that. Well, guys, in Genesis, I'm the seed that's going to crush Satan's head. In Exodus, I was the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, I'm the anointing sacrifice. In Numbers, I'm the bronze servant. If you look at me, you'll live. That's Calvary. Amen. In Deuteronomy, I'm the promised prophet. Take me all the way to Joshua. I was the warrior with a sword. I said, I'm here to take over. In the book of Judges, I'm a deliverer. In Ruth, I'm a kinsman redeemer. In Samuel, kings in the Chronicles, I was the promised king. In Ezra, in Nehemiah, I'm the restorer of the nation. In Esther, I'm the advocate. In Job, I'm a redeemer. In Psalms, I'm all in all. In Proverbs, I'm the pattern and wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, I'm your goal. In Song of Solomon, I'm your beloved. All the minor prophets, he's the coming prince of, of peace. Mark, uh, Matthew, he's the king. Mark, he's the servant. Amen. In Luke, he's the son of God. In John, he's the son of God. Uh, in, in Luke, he's the son of man. In Acts, he was Christ ascended, seated, and sending. In all the epistles, letters. He's Christ indwelling, filling. In the book of Revelation, he's Christ returning and reigning again. 
Can you imagine as he began to share? Uh, there are times I wish I was there to hear the sermons that Jesus preached to those around him. He just began to share with them and their eyes enlightened. Their heart turned to fire. And you talking about heartburn. Who roll age can't touch that. Man, that, oh, boo, did not, uh, there are times I, I can get in church and I can hear somebody, sometimes I hear me preach and I want to take notes. I just listen to the word. The word comes into your life and it begins to give you hope. Hope, why, why you got hope? Because love walked up. Love walked up. Amen. Your heart, Jesus can walk the road with us. Amen. We can look straight at him and at times we not even recognize him. But then he opens the word to us, and we go from slow to burning, from sorrow to hope to a future, self-pity to all, worry to wonder, doubt to belief, from tugging our way to going his way, from depart from me, I'm a sinful man, to forsaking all and following him, from we want you to do for us whatever we ask, to can you drink this cup that I drink? A murmur, a murmur. I went to the doctor a week ago. They gave me a full exam. They did blood work three months ago and then told me all my stuff. Then they did all this exam. And they said, well, they put all this stuff on me. They put, they put handcuffs. They put, they put, they put, the, put the ankle cuffs. They put pads on the bottom of my feet, stuck stuff all over me. And I said, why y'all doing that? They said, well, we're going to see if you've got a heart murmur. I said, I got a heart murmur. I was born with one. Okay. They said, well, you need to see if you got slow circulation in your legs. I got slow circulation in my legs. I was born with muscular dystrophy. Uh, and I, said, I said, look, everything you're trying to do, I already got all that. <laughs> y'all trying to get an extra paycheck here or what? Yeah, you know, so, so we, we, I went through the whole thing. And then they told me your PSA is good, your cholesterol is good, your, 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 this is good, that's good. I know all that. Now pay us, okay. <laughs> when you meet him, you go from a murmur, a slow heart, to making the journey wearisome, discovering, at times even trudging through life. <sighs> these, seven, these two guys seven miles away, walking and talking to each other. And he just walks up and begins to share with them him. He, he breaks bread with them. There are times I look at church the Sunday after Easter, and I say, Lord, where'd all the people go? Where they at? They're seven miles from the church. And I say, Jesus, walk up to them. Share with them you. Break bread with them. Give them revelation. So that maybe on the second Sunday, they run back to the house. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't condemn them. I am mean about them. Jesus wasn't mean to them. I mean preachers that are condescending and mean and mad at everybody that don't show up for church on East Sunday after Easter. Not me. I'm glad to see y'all. Even you, Charlie. <laughs> so we get stuck. We even think it's okay. Our, our understanding is how we see and don't see God. We've invented this safe, nice pampering, overlook my or accommodate my sin, and we begin to see God as, let me say the word again, safe. And yes, in one sense, he's our refuge, our fortress, our shelter, shield about us, comfort and peace. But that's not what I mean. We've become comfortable rather than comforting peaceable, docile, rather than peacemaking. Instead of a hiding place, we want to ace in the hole. And if that don't work, we want to love him from a distance. A safe God to validate our slow hearts. Listen, a too safe God has no power to get you unstuck. Moses went up on a mountain and the mountain was was rattling and lightning. And the people told Moses, 
go talk to God for us. Go talk to God for us. We scared of him. He scares us. Let me tell you again. Your God ain't safe. Your God is a risk taker. He's a butt kicker and a name taker. He'll take your name down if you ask him. But if you don't serve and love him, someday he's going to kick your hiney. Hear me? It's a warning. So when I, I look at God, that's, he's always telling me to come out and walk on the water. He's always double dog daring me to pray over people when I'm scared. God, what if they don't get healed? What if they do? Well, God, I'm, I'm, I, I, if I witness this person, they may, they may think of me differently. Yeah, but if you don't, they're going straight to hell. And you're the only Jesus they know. So talk to them. Share with them. Share with them about what God done in your life. Amen. See, we, we got this safe God in most churches. God ain't safe in this house. Amen. God teaches us to take risk. Amen. He's, that's why I've always called the, uh, the holy wild. Amen. Because he's a holy wild God. Everything about him. He rides on clouds. <laughs> Walks on water. Raises the dead. Come on. His blood hit the ground, split the curtain, causes earthquakes. He says, I'm he, and 600 soldiers hit the ground. Don't tell me this man's safe. <laughs> he ain't nothing safe about him. Nothing. I can't spare your tears, your fears, or your traumas. Each passion has its cross of validation. It's going to be what we all endure that will express how deeply we desire. It's time to run back. It's time to run back. And share the good news with others. The world needs Jesus. The world needs him. Many today are at a crossroad. Slow of heart. We know a little, but not enough. But when we have a personal relationship with Jesus, our hearts begin to burn and change direction. Jesus never came to earth to bring religion. He came to earth to bring relationship. He wants to have a relationship with you and me. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Mm. You can be seven miles. You know, Jerusalem means the house of God. You can be seven miles from the house, the presence of God, and Jesus will hunt you down. He will find you. That's the love of God. That's when love walks in. The more I read the Word, the more excited I am about serving Him. If you've been away from God, put your hand up right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Oh, God love you. Amen. No shame there. Just put your hand up. Hold that hand up one more time. Let's pray this together. Why don't we say it like this? It's me again, Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Wash over me. I'm coming back. Stronger than ever. Open my mind to receive your word. Help me understand it. Give me a word that will sustain me. Heal me. Give me an idea that will bless me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Woo. Man, I've learned I don't suffer from being crazy. I enjoy it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I do, I do, I do. I enjoy everything God has done. Yeah, I meet people all the time. They think serving God is, is boring. You, you ain't got no idea. You're serving the wrong God. Amen. The one I serve, I just, I, I see him all through Scripture. And the more you find him in Scripture, the more blessed you are. If I get our servant leaders to come up, to our guests, thanks for coming today. We're just glad to have you. Man, we love you. Appreciate you. Looked out there yesterday. Where were the buckets at? Oh, here they come. Brian's got the buckets. Can you put that in there for me? Uh, excited about hearing the testimonies of the 
all the folk that are in Guatemala getting back. And again, I heard it over and over from them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For, and they'd say, for sending us. How can you not send people that want to go to somewhere and be a blessing to another country? Amen? Amen. Uh, amen. You got your offering envelope? It's in front of you. You already made it out? Because some of y'all ain't moving. Well, okay, on your phone. You can go to holywild.net slash give. I know, I forget that. I forget that. I'm old school. I, I, wrote, I wrote my tithe check this morning. Yeah, I still do a check, you know. Yeah, then I run out of checks, and I got to order checks. I, I just, it's different. But someday, my daughter Katie has been teaching me that someday I can learn to do that. But I just like to feel cash. Don't you like to feel cash? Especially if somebody else hands it to you? As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Amen. Pastor Josh, you come on up here and share a few things here. Guys, well, you know, April 21st is just a couple of weeks away, Muscle Car Sunday. We'll be getting in touch with you. You remember last year we got a great big rain out, so we're going to do it again. It's the same T-shirts we had. Don't let it bother you. Just use that shirt. We're going to deal with the uh, uh, original outlaw. And uh, if there ever was an original outlaw, it was Jesus. So we're going to do that again and share. And so if you know a, a gearhead, a bike, or anyone like that, invite them out on the 21st. Uh, we're going to have barbecue. There might be a crock pot somewhere. Hey, H, leave a bucket back there for people to put money in for barbecue. Any money you put in there, we'll be buying barbecue with that. We want to feed everybody free, as you know. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just put it on the table over there. That'd be fine. Thank you, sir. Amen. Josh. What is up, you guys? We got some announcements.